controversy is swirling over the procurement of cancer drugs after the head of the Uganda Cancer Institute raised concern that over 1.8 billion shillings could have been lost through inflating costs. A letter authored on 7th July 2015 by the director of the institute, a copy in the possession of NTV's investigative desk, opens a murky window into what Dr. Jackson O'Rem refers to as the fraudulent purchase of anti-cancer drugs at astronomical costs. The letter is addressed to the general manager of National Medical Stores, Moses Kamarade. The role of the National Medical Stores is to procure, store and distribute essential medicines and other medical supplies to public health facilities. The Uganda Cancer Institute is flocked by patients from far-flung areas including the DRC, Rwanda and Burundi. Many come here in a state of despair and hopelessness looking for treatment. But once here, the hospital cannot adequately provide for everyone. It requires that some have to buy some of these medicines from pharmacies. Now, the average Ugandan and others who come from the region cannot afford some of these drugs that cost in the range of 500,000 and 1 million shillings. A cost analysis research conducted by the Uganda Cancer Institute puts under the microscope cancer drugs purchased between 2014 and 2015. In various correspondences, the Cancer Institute writes to a number of pharmaceutical companies that provide much lower prices of cancer medicine than the cost at which the national medical stores purportedly purchase the drugs. In one of the invoices from Fisher Bioservices in USA, which supplies Zoladex, a drug used in the treatment of advanced prostate cancer, the Institute established that about 223 million shillings could have been lost in this procurement between July 2014 to May 2015. When I tried to seek an interview with the National Medical Stores boss, he said he was too busy and would leave the country the next day for an assignment. However, NTV is in possession of a letter Kamarare authored in response to Dr. O'Rem's concerns dated July 20, 2015. The letter is also copied to the Health Ministry Permanent Secretary Dr. Suman Lukwago and then Director General Health Services Dr. Ruth Cheng, who has since been appointed Health Minister. The NMS boss anchors his defense on what he claims are errors which were not detected and passed on to Uganda Cancer Institute that originated from the supplier invoices for four types of drugs. The letter is also critical of what Kamabare terms as uncoordination at the Cancer Institute, where over the years we have noticed that Uganda Cancer Institute keeps changing its position on critical issues. There are some instances while interacting with your clinical team where we would raise issues of non-ordering of some items appearing on the procurement plan that the said items would expire if unutilized by the Uganda Cancer Institute. The Health Permanent Secretary Dr. Lukwago says the matter was brought to his notice. He told NTV that the inflation was perhaps as a result of errors. Appropriate when they try to do those recurrent analyses and then they write to NMS tell them there was an inflation here. What I have seen, NMS sometimes also discover that their equipment, uh, I think they are using a system which, which captures budgets and others and prices, sometimes it makes error. So they will re respond and say, this was an error. Now, this is a partnership which we feel is going to work and the, at the end we are going to get the best of everything out of it because the two institutions and the many institutions with NMS are willing to talk to each other. What I'm imploring our administrators of those institutions, they should have open eyes, they should have knowledgeable minds, and then they are able to analyze the implementation of their budget. If there is an error, we are going to support them to bring that error to the attention of NMS and tell them to address it. Yet the Cancer Institute highlights at least the cost of 127 anti-cancer drugs a list whose price was inflated as cogent evidence to show that about 1.8 billion shillings could have been saved. I also visited some clinics in Kampala that sell anti-cancer drugs to independently verify the claims of Uganda Cancer Institute. The prices tallied with what was unraveled by the Institute. In 2014, the Daily Monitor newspaper carried a story where it was revealed that the United States was investigating the national medical stores over the suspected use of billions of shillings disbursed under a five-year project HIV testing kits and other laboratory supplies. 
This controversy comes at the time cancer continues to sweep across vast swaths of sub-Saharan Africa with devastating effects, often defying the usual causes attributed to processed foods, alcohol, smoking, and sedentary lifestyles. At the Cancer Institute, the latest statistics show a rapid rise in numbers of those found with the disease. The treatment is unaffordable to a majority of Ugandans, and a recent fundraising for a young woman with cancer captured public imagination. A poster child of the disease, Carrot Harris' story underscores a flawed health system in most of sub-Saharan Africa, fraught with old equipment and few medical experts. Emmanuel Mutaiziwa, NTV Weekend Edition.